Um, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Brookman, and I am the CEO of Airship and Toggle. I'm delighted today to be joined by Vic Searle uh, from Data Hawks as part of our Come Back Strong campaign. This is a little bit of a fireside chat without the fire. And um, we have 10 minutes as a little bit of a teaser. And uh, welcome, Vic. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's really brilliant to be chatting to you, Dan. Thanks so much. Um, so we are. Um, we met about two, three years ago at Byron. Um, you were just leaving Byron. We were just going into Byron. Uh, but we've formed a, a pretty good relationship since then uh, because you're all about data and we're all about data and you're about connecting the dots and we like to provide the dots. Um, so do you want to give us a quick intro uh, into Data Hawks? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we met, I was the marketing director there. So I've got a long background in marketing and ops. Um, and then about a year ago, I founded Data Hawks. The idea being that we pull together all of the data from the different platforms you've got and use it to identify and profile your most valuable customers. And that just helps give real sort of clarity and direction of who you should be targeting and how much it's worth to you. Yeah. And I think that data... I mean, it's really come to fruition this last year, hasn't it? I mean, as we're saying, we did a masterclass in um, February, 25th of February, and already there was about 20% less people that had booked that turned up in London. Uh, that was yeah. the last time, I think, thereabouts that I was in London. Um, and since then, obviously, data's just been at the forefront of everything. There's loads of new tech, uh, which means there's loads of new data points, and you've done some work with us on our track and trace Piece, which was mm -hmm. uh, really valuable and we could see that there was a lot of uh, fresh new data came in through that as well so all about the data so um first off then what's it going to be like on the other side is it going to be the roaring 20s um what do you think it's going to look like do you know what i think we all want some good news right we all want to hear some good news and we want to think that we've got a spring and summer ahead of us that's gonna be really, really bouncy. And there's a growing idea, and I'm hearing this a lot, that we are gonna get another roaring 20s. You know, to hear people chatting, we're gonna have people dancing in the street with, you know, six pints of beer in one hand and a hot dog and a pizza in the other. And I think that's gonna be true to an extent. And I think it will last for, you know, a few days, maybe a few weeks, maybe even a couple of months. But things are gonna to start to get back to normal pretty quickly after that, whatever normal is gonna be. And there's loads of things to think about, you know, what are the big cultural shifts? You know, how does it, you know, work people continuing to work from home, for instance? And also, somebody's got to pay for the huge amount of money that has been spent and wasted um, during this COVID crisis. Don't even start me on track and trace there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so somebody's got to pay for it, you know, and, and I think we're going to see possibly slightly higher taxes and, and higher charges and stuff. There'll be still lots of unemployment around. Um, and I, I just think that we could have another surge of the virus. You know, certainly this morning it's in the news that we might be getting another round of vaccinations in, in, the, in the autumn. So I don't want us to be focusing on the Roaring Twenties. What I want operators to be focusing on is, aren't you bored? You know, haven't you had enough of being at the whims of stuff like the economy? Haven't you had enough of being at the whims of the weather or how well England are doing in a World Cup competition or whatever it is? And I think that operators should be trying to take control back of their businesses. And the best way to do that is by using data. Yeah, cool. OK, and I, I think that we're both on the same page uh, around discounting. Uh, you know, you and I share we've had lots of conversations about this yeah. and, you know, the eat out and help to help out was such a it was a great big splurge of cash for operators but so dangerous that it undervalues and undermines the price uh in yeah. in people's uh in in venues and in operators businesses so how do you um how can operators use data better to foster a more commercial mindset do you think in marketing uh without losing the you know the heart and soul you're dead right about eat out to help out. What drove me mad at the time, and I was really vocal about this, was that everybody was really excited about how many people were coming out. But of course they were. We were giving them a, well, we weren't, but the government was giving them a tenner and we were benefiting from the largest marketing campaign this industry had ever seen. So of course people were coming out in droves. And we, we saw looking in some of the data of your clients that it started to slow down again, you know, once that had been withdrawn. And to me, it's about sort of personalization, right? You know, we're, we're living in the era of personalization and personalization requires data. 
but data makes people feel really fearful because in hospitality we do everything on gut instinct you know what we're like we're hospitality people yeah. but if you think of retailers retailers are 25 years ahead in their use of data you know they've the, the club card was launched like 26 years ago you know boots advantage card 26 years ago and when you think of some of the things like you know the big christmas adverts that, that the retailers will bust out once a year you can't really say that there is anything more emotive or emotional than one of the big retailers christmas adverts mm -hmm. and yet it's all underpinned by data you know that stuff doesn't happen by chance and, and by accident so i think it's about using your data to to identify those most valuable customers get to know them in as much detail as possible and and there's a real distinction here because we have a tendency to gather data on things like you know age and gender so in that case, you should be talking to me as a 46 year old female, you're going to be talking to me about, I don't know, the menopause and, you know, I don't know, laser eye surgery or something like that. What do people talk to 46 year olds? But if you got to know me a bit and saw that I only dairy free stuff, you could really start to engage with me. And if you got to know me even more and got to know whether do I eat dairy free because, you know, it's because I really care about the environment or is it because it's a health thing and I'd love to be drinking cow's milk or maybe there's something in between, that's when you get to a level of personalization and engagement that's just unbeatable. And then what you do is you give that to your creatives because that's the brief and you use all the creativity and the innovation and the humor and the pace and all of the stuff that this industry is absolutely known for to bring that data to life. And that's when you start to see massive commercial benefits without losing any of the heart and soul that, that we're known for. And I guess that that's going to be um, doubly important as we come out of this and uh, brands have these multiple revenue opportunities, whether it's uh, licensing a brand to a supermarket, whether it's doing the cook at home, whether it's doing they've finally stepped into the delivery world or the Uber Eats yeah. world or whatever, um, as well as then actually operating their businesses. If they can do that personality and add and understand that customer um, then it would be easier to market through across all of those different channels. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, if you're selling stuff online, you want to be selling it to the people that are most likely to be buying it. And you want to be targeting those people in the in the places that that they are. If you are opening with reduced capacity, which we probably will be opening with reduced yeah. capacity, you want to make sure that the people that are sitting in those seats are the people that are likely to spend the most money or, you know, or are most valuable. And I think you can use you can use the same principles of data to apply to really any setting. It's all about understanding those customers in massive detail, working out how to acquire more of them, you know, where are they, how to convert them to become more valuable if they're not quite as valuable as you would like them, and using everything you know about them to retain them as long as possible. And, and final question then, um, what should operators be doing today? I mean, to, to me, you know, any any digital marketing, any decent marketing takes time. It's not stuff that you can just turn off and, and it works because if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. You've got to get you, you've got to get your stuff in order. You've got to make sure you've got your data in order and you've got decent data. It's not just about a volume of data. It's about, you know, the quality of that data. And does it sort of like represent proof of presence? Are we talking to people who have genuinely been in your business and are a customer? or people that maybe are engaging through social who may really like you, but maybe have got no intention of ever being a real life customer. So get all your, get all your data together um, and then identify your most valuable because that's when you know like how to target and you've got an acquisition conversion and retention strategy right there, just, just knowing who you're most valuable. And then, you know what, people, it's gonna get a bit mad, you know, and I'll be the first person that's out on the street, you know, with my six pints and, and my hot dogs. But during that time, this is an amazing time to collect data. I think with one of your, your one of your clients, wasn't it 88% of their CRM signups came through your platform and uh, through your track and trace platform in, in September alone. So it's a massive opportunity to use it. And the thing is with data, is it's meaningless unless it's unless it's actionable. So make sure that you've got a decent CRM, you know, make sure you've got a decent loyalty tool, make sure it's set up and you know how to use it. Make sure that you you are aware how to start doing your segmentation because then you've got something that you've got all this data, but you can activate it, you can bring it to life and you can you can practically see the money going in the till in front of your eyes.